Okay, in the last section we talked about unit rates and proportionality. Today we're going to change things up just a little bit and deal with something that's slightly more sophisticated that's used much more often in the long run. So instead of unit rates, today we're going to talk about determining a rate of change. Rate of change in context. So we're going to be given situations and we need to figure out something called a rate of change. So let's talk about what a rate of change is. The rate of change is a rate. It's definitely a rate that compares how much the second quantity has changed compared to how much the first quantity has changed. So it compares how much the second quantity has changed with how much the first quantity has changed. And this is usually done from one measurement to the next. So I'm going to underline this right here from one measure, measure, measurement to the next. And I'm going to underline it in several places here. Just as a reminder, we really need two measurements. We need a measurement of what something was before and what it was after. So we're comparing from one measurement to the next. So where a unit rate compares compared quantities from one single measurement. We always did the y coordinate over the x coordinate. The rate of change compares how much the quantities have changed. That's why it's called a rate of change. How much they have changed from one measurement to the next measurement. So again, I'm going to underline one measurement to the next measurement. We've got to have two different measurements, okay? So the rate of change is going to be the change in the second quantity. Remember the y was always on the top and the x was always on the bottom. Um, the y is the second uh, coordinate. So we're going to measure the change in the second quantity and then we're going to divide it by the change in the first quantity. Now sometimes there'll be x's and y's. A lot of times on this particular one because we're talking about these rates of change in context, um, they're not going to be x's and y's. They're going to have labels on them. So here's an example. This is number one and we're actually going to do several problems from the assignment together because this is just a matter of getting used to, oh, okay, I, I know what a rate of change is and I know how to compute it from a table. Um, so this is the situation on problem number one. You are a complete math nerd, at least I am, and you're on vacation with your family. Your dad says he never goes over 75 MPH. And remember, MPH, you probably know this, but let's just make sure, stands for miles per hour. Um, you decide to check and make sure by asking him how many miles you've traveled since you started your trip. Then you compute the rate of change since you last asked. Okay, so this is important since you last asked. So we're going to be comparing the measurement that our dad gave us with the last one that he gave us. So let's take a look at the uh, information here. So the data is organized in a table right here. This is the hour when you asked your dad how far you'd gone, and this is what his answer was for the distance traveled. So we asked him right when we were still in the driveway. We're on hour zero. The clock hasn't even started yet, and we haven't gone anywhere. We haven't uh, accumulated any miles or anything like that. After one hour, he says we've gone 75 miles. After three hours, he says we've gone 225 miles. And after six hours, he says we've gone 450 miles. Now, this is a little bit different, so we're talking rate of change. We're not going to take the second coordinate and divide it by the first coordinate. What we're going to do is we're going to take the measurement, uh, the second measurement, and subtract the first measurement in order to find that rate of change. So let me show you how this works. I've put NA on the first one because there is no measurement before this one, okay? So I'm going to put this right here, no measure before, okay? before this. Okay, this is where we start. This is the starting point. So we really can't have a rate of change because we don't have anything to compare it to. However, on this one we've got something to compare it to. So here's how we do this. We're going to find the rate of change and I'm going to put a little arrow between the first measurement and the second measurement. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to find how much it changed from this to this. So we're going to do the change in the second quantity. So I'm going to do 75 minus 0. On the second measurement, Dad told us that it was we traveled 75 miles. On the first measurement, he said zero miles. And I'm going to label that in miles. Remember, the top quantity always has to be the same. It's got to be in miles in this particular case. And the bottom quantity is going to be the measure of hours. So if we did 75 minus zero here, we're going to do one minus zero there. So one minus zero. We end up with 75 on the top and one on the bottom. So we end up with, notice that that's miles on the top, hours on the bottom. So this is 75 miles per hour. 
Okay, so I'm going to write it like that. So that is the rate of change, the, that, that first rate of change here from the first measurement to the second measurement. Okay, let's do the same thing again. And I think once you uh, do this a couple times, you'll see what the pattern is. We're always finding how much it's changed from one measurement to the next. Now, I'm going to do um, from the second measurement to the third measurement. So I'm going to take the 225 and I'm going to subtract the 75. And if we did 225 minus 75, then we're going to do 3 minus 1. So 3 minus 1. And again, this is miles and this is hours. So if I do 225 minus 75, you can double check me on your calculator, you're going to end up with 150. And 3 minus 1, of course, is 2. Uh, 150 divided by 2 is 75. So this would be 75 miles per hour. Okay? So from the first measurement to the second measurement, Okay, so 0, 0 to 175, that was 75 miles per hour. From the second measurement to the third measurement, it was also 75 miles per hour. And again, notice the pattern here. So here's what we're doing. Um, if we're finding the difference between this measurement and this measurement, we're going to do 450. We're going to do the second one minus the first one. Okay, so 225. And then we're going to do 6 minus 3. So again, notice the pattern. If I do 450 minus 225, I'm going to do 6 minus 3. Now, there are a couple other ways that you could get the right answer on this one, but this is a much better way to go because it's going to match up with the things we do in the future. So keep that in mind. We're always going to be doing the second measurement minus the first measurement. Okay? So we do the 450 minus 225, so we do the 6 minus 3. We end up with 225 on the top. We end up with, let's see, 6 minus 3, so 3 on the bottom. Just to double check, let's grab our calculator, 225 divided by 3, and we end up with 75. So this also works out to be 75. Again, this was miles on the top, hours on the bottom, so this is going to be 75 miles per hour. Okay? So, um, was dad telling the truth? Does he, does he just never go over 75 miles per hour? Okay, it looks like, based on the information that we have with the, the, what he's given us, it looks like he was going 75 miles for this entire trip, okay? All right, let's slide down here, and let's take a look at the next one. Again, you're a complete math nerd, but this time you're on vacation with your family's friend. Your friend's dad said he never goes over 75 miles per hour. Okay, you decide to check and make sure by asking how many miles you have traveled since you started your trip, and then compute the rate of change since you last asked. So we're going to do the same type of thing here. Now, it does say he never goes over 75 miles per hour. I do want to show you something right here. You may notice that some of the um, measurements are the same in both of these lists. I'll make that a little bit smaller definitely starts out at zero zero we're right in the driveway again and then you'll notice that each one of the trips ends by going 450 miles so based on that kind of on an average it looks like we were going the same speed because we covered the same distance in in the same amount of time but let's take a little bit closer look here so again because there's not a previous measurement for zero zero we're gonna put NA and then we're gonna find the rate of change between our first measurement when we were in the driveway and then when we were one hour down the road so again we're gonna do the second measurements difference in the second measurement so I'm gonna do 60 minus 0 and if I do 60 minus 0 I need to do 1 minus 0 so this is gonna be 60 on the top and again that's miles it's 1 on the bottom so that's hours so this would be 60 miles per hour okay now we didn't go over 75 miles per hour so we're totally okay with that he's still telling the truth there okay let's check this one right here um, this would be 210 minus 60 and this would be 3 minus 1 so this is let's see here 210 minus 60 that's gonna be 150 and 3 minus 1 is 2 so if we take 150 divided by 2 we've kinda of seen this one before this is gonna be 75 so that's gonna be 75 miles per hour okay there's our rate of change and then let's do the last one. Again, let's stick with the pattern. We're going to do 450. If I do 450 minus 210, I've got to do 6 minus 3. Okay, so notice how these match up. The 6 and the 450 come first in our little subtraction problems, and our 210 and our 3 come second. So 450 minus 210, uh, let's see, that's uh, 240. And then this would be 6 minus 3, that's going to be 3. 
Now you may know what that is. Gosh, if we just cover up that 0, that's 24 divided by 3. That should be 8. But let's just double check and make sure. 240 divided by 3, and we end up with 80. Okay? So this is 80 miles per hour. Okay? Now we're not asking about proportionality or anything like that. All we're asking is to figure out the, the rate of change. And from this information, from the context of this situation, your friend's dad says he knows never goes over uh, 75 miles per hour. Well, that was true for the first little bit. He didn't go over 75 miles for, per hour um, up until hour three. But he did go over 75 miles per hour in, in those last couple of hours from hour three to hour six. Um, in fact, he had to average 80 miles per hour. So he kind of had to make up for going a little bit slower at that first hour in those last couple hours to end up at the same place that we did in our, in our previous trip. Again, we're just asking to find the rate of change, just getting used to finding rate of change in context. So I'm going to slide this over here. And we've got another couple of problems here. I'm going to show you each one of these. So there are three more on the back side. Now this is your assignment. So here's what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to do number four. And then if we have time, we'll go back and do number three and number five if you want to watch that. I would really encourage you, if you feel like you get this, um, the idea is to fill out the table and then compute the rates of change. Um, and then, I mean, you're all set to go. So as long as you can calculate um, rates of change, uh, then you should be in good shape. So we're going to look at number four because I think number four is probably the hardest here. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to read the information here in the problem and then you're going to fill out the table and then you're going to use the table to calculate the rate of change. And you can show your work right here like we did on that last one. So I'm going to make this just a tad bigger so we can see everything and maybe show our work a little bit better. Um, so here's the problem. Your cell phone plan costs $30 each month and it costs $5 for the first 1,000 texts. Um, four dollars for the second 1,000 text, three dollars for every 1,000 text after that. It says create a table of value showing how much your bill would be if you sent up to 5,000 texts. And then it gives us a little hint here. Start with zero texts and then count up in increments of 1,000. So increments means that's, that's the step size. That's how much we're going to go up every single time. Now stop and think about this. If we send zero text, does that mean our bill is going to be zero dollars? Well, it doesn't because remember, our cell phone plan costs $30 just to have our cell phone. We can make our calls, you know, we can browse and all that sort of stuff. So it's going to cost $30. So our, if for zero text, our, our bill is still going to be $30. Okay? Now it says go up in increments of 1,000. So let's do 1,000 texts, then 2,000, then 3,000, then 4,000, and then 5,000 texts. Okay? So if we send 1,000 texts, remember what happens for that first 1,000. For the first 1,000 texts, it costs $5. So we'd have our $30 phone bill, and then think about how much these 1,000 texts cost us. They cost us $5. So that would be a $35 phone bill if we, if we did uh, 1,000 texts. Let's say we did another 1,000 texts. So now we're at 2,000 texts. So it says it's $4 for the second 1,000 texts. So $4 for the second 1,000 texts. So the second 1,000 texts, when we went from 1,000 texts to 2,000 texts, that was our second 1,000 texts, cost us $4. So we'd have to add $4 to this right here. So that's going to be $39. Okay. Then it says it's $3 for every text after that. So once you get that far along, they just say, okay, it's just going to be $3 for every 1,000 texts from now on. So we do another 1,000, and that's going to cost us $3. So that's going to be uh, 39 plus 3 is $42. Another 1,000 text is going to be another $3. So this is going to be $45 altogether. And then another 1,000 text is going to be another $3, so that's going to be $48 altogether. So you can see why we only have a couple problems on this assignment, because it does take a while for us to figure out each one of these, and we still need to find out the rate of change. So remember, because we're comparing with the previous measurement, there is no previous measurement. Okay, so I'm going to write no previous. No previous measurement. So the rate of change for that first one is not applicable, okay? But it is for this next one. So let's see what we do right here. We're going to figure out what the rate of change is from 0, 030 to 1,035. And again, we always take the second measurements and we subtract the first measurements. So it's the change in the second quantity, the billing quantity. So that's going to be $35 minus $30. If I do 35 minus 30, 
I'm going to do 1000 minus 0. So this is um, 30 minus, th sorry, 35 minus 30 is 5. And then, whoops, need a 0 there, 1000 on the bottom right here. So this is, remember, this was dollars and this was texts. So this is $5 per 1000 texts. So $5 per 1000 texts. And it's important when we've got stuff in context that we put the, the units on there. Okay, let's do the next one. Um, so we already did from this row back to this row. So now we're going to do this guy right here. Okay, so we're going to do 39 minus 35. And we're going to do 2,000 minus 1,000. So we end up with, that's a 39 minus 35. So that's going to be $4 on the top. 2,000, I better make that look like it's 2,000. 2,000 minus 1,000 is 1,000. So this is going to be a rate of change of $4 per 1,000 texts. Okay, we'll keep going with this. Um, we're going to do from here to here. Okay, I'll stop drawing those lines in just a minute. 42 minus 39, if you do 42 minus 39, we better do 3,000 minus 2,000. So we end up with 3 on the top, meaning $3. 3,000 minus 2,000 is 1,000. So we end up with $3 per 1,000 texts. Okay, keep going here. We'll do the 45 minus 42 and 4,000 minus 3,000. I'm going to go ahead and do the next one. The next one would be 48 minus 45 and we're going to do 5,000 minus 4,000. So we end up with, let's see, 45 minus 42, $3. 4,000 minus 3,000, that's 1,000. So this is $3, whoops, too many zeros there, getting a little carried away, per 1,000 texts. And the last one, 48 minus 45, that's going to be $3 per 1,000 texts. Okay? All right. So that's it. That's all we have to do. But I would like you, when you get done with each one of these, I would like you to stop and think about, okay, what's going on here and why are these the right answers? So let's take a look at this. So when we haven't sent any text, there's no rate of change. We don't have anything to compare that to. When we've sent 1,000 texts, it says it's $5 per 1,000 texts. When we've sent 2,000 texts, it's $4 per 1,000 texts at that point. When we're sending 3,000 texts, um, the rate of change is $3 per 1,000 texts. When we're sending 4,000 texts, it's $3 per 1,000 texts. When we're sending 5,000 texts, it's, it's uh, $3 per 1,000 texts. So um, each one of these is a rate of change, uh, measuring that change from one measurement to the next. So notice that for that first thousand, it was $5. Next thousand, it was uh, $4. Next thousand, it was $3, $3, $3. And that's exactly what it says right here. So we've kind of come full circle. What we found as far as the rate of change matches up with what we've got right here. The first 1,000 texts, $5 per thousand. Next 1,000 texts for the second, $4 per thousand. And then for every one after that, it's going to be $3 per 1,000 texts. Okay, um, if you feel like you can do the next two on your own, be my guest. Go right ahead. I'd really love it if you would. Um, if you need some extra help, I'm going to go ahead and do those right now. So let's take a look at this one. It says, Courtney is collecting coins. She has 12 coins already, and she decides to add two coins each week. Create a table of values showing how many coins she has over a five-week period. Start at week zero. So when she started, it said she had 12 coins already. And then she's going to add two coins every week. So after the first week, if she adds two coins, that means she's going to have 14. If she, at the end of week two, she's going to add another two coins. So this is going to be 16. After another week, she's going to add two more coins, so this is going to be 18. And you'll notice that this pattern is just going to continue like this. We're going to count up by one week, and she's going to add two coins every week. So this is going to be 20 coins, and this is going to be 22 coins. So now we're going to go through and we're going to calculate the rate of change. Again, there's no previous measurements, so we're going to write NA on this one. 
and then I'm going to show the work this way. Again, we're going to take the second one and subtract the first measurement. So we're going to do the coin quantity on the top and the weak quantity on the bottom. So we're going to be, do 14 minus 12 and 1 minus 0. So that's 2 over 1. So that's going to be 2. That would be coins per week. Okay, we'll do the next one. Again, we're going to do 16 minus 14 on the top because we're measuring coins on the top, always that second quantity on the top. Um, and then we're going to do 2 minus 1 on the bottom. So that's going to be 16 minus 14 is 2. 2 minus 1 is 1. Again, we get 2 coins per week. Now, I'm going to run through here and write down the work here. So this is going to be 18 minus 16. This is going to be 3 minus 2. This one's going to be 20 minus 18. This one's going to be 4 minus 3. And this last one's going to be 22 minus 20. And we're going to get 5 minus 4. Every single one of these works out to be a 2 on the top and a 1 on the bottom. Okay, So this is going to be 2 coins per week, 2 coins per week. And if we wanted to, we could just put those quote marks right there just to say it's going to continue all the way down. So that's it. F take the context, take the situation, take the story problem, fill out the table, and then compute the rate of change um, from each measurement comparing to the previous measurement. Okay, again, it's always going to be the change in the second quantity on the top over the change in the first quantity on the bottom. So let me slide down here. We'll take a look at the very last one. It says you get paid $8.25 per hour at your new full-time job. Create a table of values showing how much you make for the first eight hours you work each day and start at zero hours. So we're going to start at zero hours. If we haven't worked, we're not going to get any pay. First hour, we're going to get $8.25. For two hours, we're going to get $16 and, if you double check, 50 cents. Okay. Three hours we're going to get $24.75. Let's just double check that and make sure that everybody knows how we're doing that. Um, if we're going to get paid $8.25 per hour, we're going to take 8.25 and we're going to times it by how many hours we work. So there's the $24.75. Um, 8.25 times 4, we end up with 33. So this would be 4 and $33. So this is going to be 5 hours, 6 hours, 7 hours, and 8 hours. Um, if I double the number of hours, I'm going to double the pay. So this is going to be 66. Let's just double check here. So 8.25 times, oops, times 8, 66, got that. Um, and I'm going to do this. I'm going to hit second and enter and recall that. So all I have to do is just edit that second one rather than typing the whole thing in again times 5, 41.25. Recall that. Second, enter. We'll recall it. Change the 5 to a 6. 49.50. 49.50. And then the last one is a 7. So again, we'll just hit second, enter. Recall that. Change that to a 7. Hit enter, and we get 57.75. So 57.75. Now, I'm going to do several of these, but I think you know what's going to happen on this. If we're getting paid $8.25 uh, per hour, that should be the rate of change on every one of them. So I'm going to put NA on this one because, again, we had no previous measurement. So I'll just put no previous. And then on this one, we're comparing uh, the number of hours worked with the pay. So 825 minus 0. And 1 minus 0 is 825 on the top and 1 on the bottom. So that's 825, and I'll write this in words, per hour. Okay, let's do another one. Let's just pick this one right here. 33 minus 2475 and 4 minus 3. Um, let's double check here. So we need 33, 33, whoops minus 24.75 is 8.25. Yep, 8.25 here and one hour on the bottom. Okay, so let's uh, make sure we got this one right. We, we would be right here. So this is going to be $8.25 per hour. Okay, and let's check, uh, let's check the seventh one. Let's check this one right here. 57, whoops, 57. 75 minus 49.50 and then 7 minus 6. That part's pretty easy. We've got a 1 in the denominator. And let's check this. 
57.75 minus 49.50 or just 0 .5, 825. Okay, 8.25. Okay, so all of these are the same. Every single one of these is $8.25, which we would want. We'd want to know that when we go to work, we're going to get paid the same amount uh, every single time. So in other words, the rate of change for the pay is the same all the way through here. Um, we, we get 8.25 per hour. All right, now that's just an exposure to rate of change. We're going to be talking about this more um, in, in various contexts and settings. So uh, if you followed all this, then you're, you're done with the assignment. I just want you to spend some time thinking about it. Um, and uh, good luck in, in keeping this straight. Please ask questions if you've got any.